Vital Empty Beers. Check this out. Bling! That's the Santa Cruz Nomad I had in 2010, 10 years ago. When I took that photo, I remember thinking, this is it. I'll never need another mountain bike again. Because who doesn't want a triple chain ring and no dropper post? Thankfully, the people at Santa Cruz are a little more forward thinking than I was. 27.5 came into play. They've continued to refine this descent oriented machine with various tweaks and changes over the years. As 2021 approaches, we're on version five of the Carbon Nomad, seen here in this glorious oxblood red color. Vital staffer and tester Brad Howell put this big hit beast through the paces and having owned and ridden a variety of longer travel 27.5 bikes, he'll tell us just how this new Nomad stacks up on the trail. This paint is nuts. It's called oxblood. Oxblood? Oxblood, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's sinister. I like that. That's dark. Yeah. That's dark. <laughs> How much do you think it weighs? Dude, that. 32. 32. Okay. Yeah, I'm cool. going to swing high. All right. Let's so, weigh this beast. You. All right. Da, 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 da. 32, 7 ounces. 32, 4 ounces. <laughs> nice work. Yeah. Yeah, pretty Someone good. Someone should give me a job doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Boom. We have timestamps in the description below so you can cruise around to get where you want in this video. But we hope you just keep watching. The Nomad proves that 27.5 ain't dead and neither is long travel. The bike gets 170 mils front and rear using Santa Cruz's lower link VPP and adjustable geometry via flip chip. The Nomad comes in sizes small, medium, large, and XL, and they all run 38 mil stanchion forks. In the low setting, head angle is 63.7 degrees, seat angle is 77.7, and there are size specific chainstay lengths. This is done by adjusting where the rear triangle connects to the front triangle, so there are no unique brake adapters or derailleur hangers. Our medium has a 430 mil chainstay length, where large is 435 mils. Medium reach is 450, top tube is 582, and seat tube length is a nice and low 405 millimeters. We have full geometry charts on vitalmtb.com. Subtle refinements that have come from successful updates on other Santa Cruz models have made their way into the Nomad. The straight progressive suspension curve has been tweaked a bit and means coil shocks are more than welcome on the Nomad, so we tested both coil and air. Shock stroke is longer than previous models, allowing for easier suspension setup and more sensitive tuning. Santa Cruz does not recommend mulleting this bike, but we know some of you are gonna do it and show off your Frank and tweakers in our vital bike check section. We hope you do, but we warned you. The upper link is cleaner, stiffer, and more upright. Bearings are pressed only into alloy parts on the bike, not carbon. The collet pivot interface is stiff, and there are Zerk grease ports and small parts are replaceable, non-proprietary jobbers with a 10-year warranty on most of them. Santa Cruz offers lifetime free pivot bearing replacement on all models. Well, the, the models that have pivots, like Stigmata, Highball, you're out of luck. All right, guess the price. This is our X01 reserve build. So I'm just gonna go with the comfortable 8300. Close. Our CC X01 reserve model may look flashy with that oxblood color, but it comes at a price, $8,699 to be exact. There are five other carbon only models of the Nomad. Sorry y'all, no alloy. With the Nomad CR starting at 4499 US using a SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain and RockShox Zeb fork. The four top models come in both coil or air shock options, with the Nomad CXT builds offering Shimano XT kits with Fox 38 Performance Elite forks and RockShox Super Deluxe coil or air shocks. The CC X01 models run SRAM X01 drivetrains and Fox 38 factory fork and shocks, either DHX2 coil or Float X2 air shock, both with climb switch. The Nomads with coil option come with Maxxis tires that feature double down casing for that extra gnar smashing. All right, here's a test. If you've made it this far into the video, 
without leaving a comment about the price of the bike, leave a comment below that says Slayer would hit it. And we're gonna get into the ride impressions with our man, B3Z. Since its arrival, I've been able to get the Nomad out in a variety of scenarios. Big days in the saddle, days at the jump park, and even the sneaky lunch lap. In other words, a lot of the scenarios that most riders find themselves in. And that's what the Nomad is supposed to be all about. It's the bike that riders should be able to count on no matter what the day has in store. Jumping aboard the Nomad was comfortable. The updated, longer geometry was a welcome sight. The steeper seat angle isn't so upright as to cramp the cockpit for climbing. I felt my weight was nice and central, providing good rear wheel grip for steeper climbs and keeping the front end in check and on the ground. I had a pretty fun time charging up more technical climbs, abandoning finesse and just laying down leg power. Point, pedal, and run it up and over. The Nomad climbs the chunk for as long as the lungs will deliver the oxygen. We knew vital readers would want to know how the Nomad performs with a coil. And because Santa Cruz was kind enough to supply us with a Fox DHX2 coil, I installed it right out of the gate. Leaving the shock fully open, not engaging the climb switch, gives the Nomad a soft, rhythmic bob on smooth climbs. No matter how much attention I paid to making pretty circles with my legs, the open shock would bob. However, standing up to sprint meant the Nomad would still get up and go without a mushy feel on the pedals. The DHX2 is equipped with a climb switch though, and it's meant to be used. Engaging the blue lever firms up the coil significantly, vastly improving efficiency. Even with the shock fully open, the Nomad did a terrific job of using the natural terrain to build and maintain its speed. Rider input results in direct output on the bike's behalf. As the terrain grows rougher, the joys of the coil shock only glow brighter. Fast stutter bumps, big hits, consecutive midsize, and large holes. All of them were handily dealt with by the DHX2 coil. Our summary on the coil shock topic, Santa Cruz Nomad and Fox make a great team, keeping the bike decently efficient and remarkably supple. I did spend some time with the Fox X2 air shock mounted, since most riders will be running that option. The X2 is noticeably more efficient than the coil with only marginal sacrifices in performance through rougher terrain. The trade-off is more pop on lips and more jump-oriented trails. Riders feeling apprehensive on which shock to go with should evaluate the following questions. Do you want to save that bit of weight? Will you be bothered by having to stay on top of flipping your climb switch? If you aren't too mad about some added weight and are okay with flipping the switch, our vote is go coil. Otherwise, I can't think of anybody that will be sad about their decision to stick with air, particularly if you're the sort of rider that likes to fine tune their ride and not fuss with swapping springs. With all of the slack bikes we test, any more 65 degrees or less is the norm for a trail and enduro bike. I left the Nomad in the high 64 degree head tube angle position to keep it as sharp as possible. The low setting is only three tenths of a degree slacker and things have to get pretty heavy to need something even more slack with the trade-offs coming at the expense of climbing performance and sluggish handling everywhere else. In the meandering terrain that we all must put up with between the fun bits, the Nomad stayed peppy and responsive. Is it any surprise that the Nomad is a riot downhill? I couldn't get enough of this bike. The faster, the better. The steeper, the better. More rocks, chunk, and lips, please. Santa Cruz's new Nomad is everything a rider could want in a long travel bike. Where the prior generation's geometry may have riders cramped or getting pushed forward in bigger rock gardens, the new Nomad keeps riders centered and stable while maintaining speed. Because things haven't gotten super long, the Nomad will actually turn and can be managed in tight or rowdy scenarios. Loose rocks are dealt with by a simple push through the feet. Give a shove and the Nomad goes where the rider looks. Getting the Nomad up to speed is a breeze, while keeping that speed is only a matter of staying off the brakes. Taking us by surprise was the Nomad's desire to get off the ground and play its way down the trail. A bruiser like this had me ready to ride with a heavy hand. That wasn't so with the Nomad. Relative to other bikes in this class of suspension, I was delighted by how much feedback I'd get from the bike when loading the suspension for lips or small trail features. The Nomad will run through the rough stuff, but only if you choose to stay on the ground. I know I'm soft, or maybe it's the downhiller in me. But when a bike hauls the mail like this Nomad does, I want that seat down low and out of the way. A 150 mil dropper on a size medium with a seat tube this low is kind of a shame. I'm five foot nine and rock a 30 inch inseam. I could easily run a 175 reverb on this bike with seat post to spare. 
I'll point this next one out for you. There are no aluminum frame options with the new Nomad. Carbon C and CC are the only frame choices available here. While Santa Cruz is not shying away from aluminum, they still offer alloy bikes in most of their line. It wasn't to be for the Nomad. When it came time to develop the new Nomad, Santa Cruz wanted to keep its focus on making the bike perform its best, and that meant only enough resources for carbon. If I had to say where the Nomad performs best, my answer would be a simple yes. In a cliche as old as the Nomad name, this bike climbs incredibly well, is versatile all over the mountains, and absolutely flies down them. I mean, is it any surprise though? This is an $8,600 bike. It should be a top performer. Here's the rub. It's getting pretty hard to make a bike in this price range that doesn't shine in nearly every category. The parts are all top notch, squeezing out the best performance from the lightest in-class weights. This mountain destroyer is just a hair over 32 pounds, and yet it has the geometry to perform and the suspension travel to tackle anything. I'm left to wonder, how would an S-Build option perform? How about we save $3,200 by ditching the carbon wheels, factory suspension, and top shelf drivetrain, and go for a few laps? That lower spec Nomad will certainly be heavier and move a bit slower, but many of the standout traits will remain. The geometry, suspension curve, and efficiency will stick around. And that is what prospective buyers should keep in mind here. All right, settle down. It's not our fault people have money to spend on bikes like this. Leave your most personal feelings in the comments below. Huck to flat on that subscribe button. Most importantly, get out and ride. That's what it's all about, right? Hit up vitalmtb.com for all the info. Let us know what you'd like to see in the future. You. I did a U just for you. Ooh, ooh. Later. Later. <laughs>